One thing that we didn't handle, I think you know how to do it on your own. Like what would happen when it's fully charged, as a maximum current is going through the inductor, or when you flip the switch to the, over to the other side, what would happen then? Like this is like the uh, capacitor discharging, right? So when you flip the switch over, let me just tell you what's the interesting thing here. The current through this thing, even though there will be no battery, it doesn't immediately go to zero. Why not? So let me draw the circuit so that you can imagine it better. So you know, when I flip the switch over to B, then this is what the circuit ends up looking like. So, uh, so you know, at some moment where the maximum amount of current is flowing through the inductor, this is what I do. Flip the switch over to here. So that means none of this part of the circuit does anything anymore. And this is the circuit you have now. There's, um, there's no battery in there. There's no capacitor to provide any kind of you know, potential energy. But this current will not suddenly drop to zero. It will actually continue to flow up for some time. Yes? Because uh, the magnetic field that's inside the inductor changes, and that creates back uh, induced voltage? You could understand it that way. And in the circuit context, all of that induced voltage is wrapped up into this expression here, right? So this voltage is the induced voltage. So how does this voltage get induced? The magnetic field does. I don't want you to go back to magnetic field. That's why I was referring to this. Because we are talking about the circuit. Uh, any kind of um, thing dealing with the magnetic field, it's been all wrapped up into L and I. Like, if you're not able to do this, then you didn't really understand it because you memorized one way of explaining something and you're just repeating it again and again. Yeah. So how do you explain, in the circuit context, why this current does, does not simply just drop to zero right away? Yeah, so, I mean, you cannot have an inf like infinite rate of change of current. So current has to change at some rate, and as it's changing, there's going to be voltage change across the inductor, which will be the voltage change across the register that's needed to drive the current through it. So I guess the way I prefer to think of it is that this current flows. As it flows through the register, it, uh, there's a voltage drop. That voltage drop is the voltage across the inductor that's now causing the current to change. Anyway, so um, I think going through the math, it will be a mirror image version of the RC circuit, discharging RC circuit, except it's less intuitive because what's discharging is actually the energy stored in the inductor. So that's the energy stored in the magnetic field inside the inductor. It, uh, so you know, in that sense, it's less intuitive, but the math is actually as simple as the RC circuit. Yeah? You're saying that the voltage drop across the resistor is the same as the voltage across the inductor because of Kirchhoff? Mm -hmm. uh, let me label some points. Point A and B. Can I say the voltage change across the uh, register is voltage change from A to B? OK. Can I also say voltage change across the inductor, you know, just the absolute value, is the voltage change from A to B? Right? Wire, inductor, wire. That's why. <laughs> because of the way they are connected. It's in a loop with only just these two.